Twenty-three. Something more of the prince. Previous to recording our stay in his dominions, it only remains to be related of Don Jalolo that after assuming the girdle, a change came over him. During the lifetime of his father, he had been famed for his temperance and discretion. But when Mardi was forever shut out, and he remembered the law of his isle, interdicting abdication to its kings, he gradually fell into desperate courses to drown the emotions at times distracting him. His generous spirit, thirsting after some energetic career, found itself narrowed down within the little glen of Willamilla, where ardent impulses seemed idle. But these are hard to die, and repulsed all round recoil upon themselves. So with Don Gilolo, who, in many a riotous scene, wasted the powers which might have compassed the noblest designs. Not many years had elapsed since the death of the king, his father, but the still youthful prince was no longer the bright-eyed and elastic boy, who with the dawn of day had sallied out to behold the landscapes of the neighboring isles. Not more effeminate Sardanapalus than he, and at intervals he was the victim of unaccountable vagaries haunted by spectres, and beckoned to by the ghosts of his sires. At times, loathing his vicious pursuits, which brought him no solid satisfaction, but ever filled him with final disgust, he would resolve to amend his ways, solacing himself for his bitter captivity by the society of the wise and discreet. But brief the interval of repentance, anew he burst into excesses, a hundredfold more insane than ever. Thus vacillating between virtue and vice, to neither constant and upbraided by both, his mind, like his person in the glen, was continually passing and repassing between opposite extremes. End of chapter 73